Welcome back to another episode of the Wear Soul Podcast, hosted by me, Chandler Danzler. You can listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and watch on YouTube. Today, we have sports reporter, sports broadcaster, and sports director at CBS 47 and Fox 30, Brent Martineau. We're pumped to have you on the show. How are you doing today? Good morning, man. Uh, I'm doing well, and uh, happy baseball season. Looks like you guys are doing pretty well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Before we start talking a little bit about your career, Jacksonville baseball, and a little bit more, I kind of like to ask this question here first. Who is Brent Martineau, and how would you introduce yourself? Ah, good question. Uh, well, uh, just a kid from Rhode Island. Uh, do you even know where that is? Small town, Rhode Island. <laughs> and uh, um, and uh, kind of made our way to, to to Jacksonville after a couple of stops in Ohio, Louisiana, uh, back home in Rhode Island, uh, New York, and and now this is kind of home for us. We've been here since 2008, so um, really just a guy that grew up uh, playing sports, liking sports, and and now doing his dream job. Really, I've known I wanted to do this since I was 12 years old, and and uh, awesome. it's a pretty cool gig. And it's changed a lot over the years, but it's still uh, kind of a passion for sports and all different sports, really, and telling stories. So uh, pretty cool to get to do what we do, even though sometimes you got to remind yourself of that along the way. For sure. All right, what kind of brought you to the Sunshine State? What brought you to Jacksonville? Yeah, I was up in uh, Albany, New York uh, with for like five years, and we are at a pretty good station up there. And uh, one of my bosses up there used to live in Jacksonville, then came back to Jacksonville, was in like a management position, and they had an opening here. Uh, back in 2008. So that's kind of how it, it worked out. And uh, here we are 16 years later and, and uh, yep. we love it here and things have really changed, but obviously we've got a couple of kids and family and, and this is their home, even though they were born in Albany, New York, they've really grown up here. So uh, I always say, if I get fired tomorrow, <laughs> I'm still hanging out here in Jacksonville, I'm not going to chase it. Anyway. <laughs> we like it uh, here in Northeast Florida. For sure. All right. Tell us a little about your background. When you were at Ashland University, did you always want to become a sports director and sports broadcaster? Yeah, I went, uh, like I said, I'm not lying. When I was 12 years old, like I kind of knew I wanted to do it. And uh, I was fortunate to have a mentor who was actually my like Little League baseball coach and CYO basketball coach. But he's a personality and still is uh, on radio up in uh, Rhode Island. And uh, he actually calls uh, the University of Rhode Island basketball games and and football nice. games and he would pick me up some on like Sunday morning at 5 30 in the morning and I'd go in there with him to the radio station and write scripts and and awesome. uh, practice a little bit and I sound like a 12 year old girl really uh, if you go back and listen <laughs> to my voice but um but that's kind of how it started for me and and a lot of high schools have programs like we had something but I never really did anything I think because I played sports but I uh -huh. knew I wanted to go to school for it so Syracuse is a really good school for this I applied there and uh, Ashland University. I just had a buddy that went there. And so we went and visited my senior year. And I was like, nice. hey, uh, let's just meet with radio TV department and uh, meet with the baseball coach. And I never even really looked into Syracuse after that because I like, kind of liked it. I could play baseball. They had a radio TV program. And I was like, this is good enough for me. So uh, that's kind of how it all happened. But it was like 12 hours from home in the middle of nowhere is Ashland University. Uh, about <laughs> an hour south of Cleveland. So definitely a little bit of a culture shock, but it turned out all right. For sure. That's awesome. All right, I'll, I saw you also played outfield for Ashland University and made it to the Division II College World Series back in 1999. Can you talk a little about your play, playing career there? Yeah, it, it was somewhat playing outfield. I would say I warmed up the right fielder or left fielder most of the time um, is how <laughs> I like to describe it. But yeah, like I, I walked on at Ashland. I was just an okay player, man. Um, I, I say this all the time now. If I if I had to come up in this time, there's no way I'd, at least the way I was uh, playing ball at that time. You know, maybe you get a little more specialization and coaching and mm. maybe I would have been better 25 years later coming out of high school. But there's no way I would have been able to walk onto a team. It's totally different now. So it's really a lot harder for guys like you and others to to play college ball. But uh, it was an awesome experience. I redshirted my freshman year, um, play a little t club tennis, actually, uh, just for fun nice. while we were redshirted. And I always knew, like, I was doing more radio TV and, and really working toward this job than kind of the way it's almost a job now for everybody in baseball. You could balance both. But the baseball experience was awesome. I mean, we had... I played for three years. Um, first year, I didn't play much. My junior year, I actually played really well. I had a really good junior year. It was the best year I've ever played baseball and played uh, a lot, just out of necessity, I think. And then yeah. 
we got a new coach in and they kind of brought some more players in and I didn't play as much that senior year, but it was my favorite year playing ball ever because we won. I'd never really won anything in high school uh, and, and up to that point in college and that experience of winning and winning the regionals and going to the world series in Montgomery, Alabama was, was awesome. So uh, it was a cool experience. And I always tell people this now it's like college baseball or college sports. You don't, everybody's thinking D one and Florida and Florida yeah. state, everything else. It's like, go play ball somewhere. It's a different experience, sure. cool experience. Um, I've had some great friends still from high school, but really the people I talk to the most probably now are from college and my teammates I played with over the years in college. So it doesn't matter if you're going to NAIA division three, wherever, if you like to play the game, keep playing the game. And uh, I think that experience really worked for me. It was, it was really cool. And uh, that was the first of many years. Now Ashland kind of got put on the map and started uh, to go to yeah. the coach. Just uh, he's been there now over 25 years and, and they've got a pretty good program up there now. For sure. All right. Being with action news, Jacks for around 16 years now, being a reporter for the Jackson Jaguars, inter interviewing people like the owner of the Jaguars, Shad Khan, Trevor Lawrence, and many other players. Tell us what that is like and how fortunate how fortunate you are to do that. Yeah, it's um I, I don't I think I have uh I like to hear you say that because I guess it kind of reminds us that you can easily take this job for granted after you've been doing it for a yeah. long time. And I think um it's just kind of second nature. Uh, now to do those kind of interviews and, you know, we've been around uh, shot con now for a dozen years almost. And yeah. uh, so it's, it's a lot of just the job. So it's not like we're in awe of it or anything else like that, but um, it is still pretty cool uh, to mm -hmm. sit down with, I mean, you're sitting down with one of the richest men in the world, right? I mean, he's a billionaire. Yeah. Uh, he's not just the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So to hear that perspective is, is pretty cool. And I like to interview all the players. I mean, Trevor Lawrence, obviously the most notable player. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a different perspective now because my kids are like 18 years old, uh, just a little older than you. And Trevor Lawrence is only like five or six years older than them. So I yeah. get a totally different perspective now. I've reached that point. Um, when I was 28 years old doing these interviews and, and following Tom Brady when his first Super Bowl when I was working in Providence to now yeah. – where I'm like, like this kid could almost be my kid. Um, exactly, yeah. It's a totally different deal, but it is cool. It's it's good. Uh, the, everybody's different. Um, you only spend a little bit of time around them, so I'm I'm pretty cognizant that I don't really know these guys as well as like you think you might know them in a five or ten minute span, even if it's yeah. fifty different times during the course of the year. Um, but overall, I mean, my experience here in Jacksonville, there's a lot of good people um, and good mm -hmm. guys. Uh, really, in my career, a lot of people be like, hey, what's the one time where somebody like blew up on you? I mean, we've had very little of that in my career. It's like the stuff that you see go viral or in a locker mm -hmm. room, whatever else. Like, we don't really have that much in Jacksonville. It's been a really good experience, pretty good people. And uh, now this locker room, I think, is fantastic. A lot of good guys, mm -hmm. good leadership, and and uh, everybody's so much more mature, man. Like at 24 years old, Trevor Lawrence is basically like a CEO of an organization at 24. Yeah. He's got to act like he's 35 and 40 years old sometimes. And mm -hmm. I think growing up in the spotlight, he's done a good job of that. For sure. All right. You have been to big time events over the past couple of years, the Super Bowl, World Series, the Masters and some national championships. Talk about what that is like reporting some of the biggest games on TV. Yeah, it's uh that that's a fun part too. The Super Bowl is actually, I think, uh, <laughs> it's going to sound funny, and I and I don't mean it in a uh, like we like going to the Super Bowls. So the Super Bowl is like the worst one to actually <laughs> cover. The game. Like I know that sounds nuts, but uh, once you've been to a Super Bowl or even like two, I'll, I'll every year we go to them, I'll tweet this out. I'll say the best place to watch the Super Bowl is at your house on your couch, you know, yeah. or whatever uh, at your party because. When you're there, it's a very corporate event. It's not super loud. Um, mm -hmm. And bases have come more and more over the last like handful of years, I feel like. So it gets louder. But it's not this crazy atmosphere like you're at a big time college football game or something. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the halftime show is pretty cool, but you're way out there. So you don't def you don't yeah. see anything close to what you'd see on TV. You don't see the replays. You don't see the commercials. <laughs> but but the bigness of being at one of those events, you, you can feel it. And 
Uh, again, the Masters is a really neat event to to be at, yep. even if it's for a day or two, which uh, we will be in April. Uh, my favorite event that I've ever covered was the 2003 and 4 ALCS. I was working up in Albany, New York. It was Red Sox Yankees. Uh, we're like two hours from New York City, two hours from Boston. We covered all seven games of both Jeez. of those. Teams. And that was intense. And yeah. uh, go back and look at that. Now, uh, you weren't even born. But if you go back and look <laughs> at that, it was it was unbelievable. And that was the 2004 one. I grew up being a Red Sox fan, too. When the Red Sox came back from 3 nothing down, went to the World Series. And I actually went to the World Series that year, too, and covered the Sox winning the World Series. So those are some cool things. Um, but some of those big events can be a little bit overblown too. Uh, I think mm -hmm. you kind of check the box. Listen, I love going to the Daytona 500 right down the road. It's one of the biggest events in, in the world. Yeah. In February. And it's a great event and it's a cool event. And I'm not a big NASCAR fan. So, uh, it's, it's fun to go cover a high school baseball game, but also to be able to go cover, you know, some of those big time events that, uh, For sure. here in Jackson, we'll get a chance to cover. For sure. All right. One of the most important aspects of being a sports broadcaster is having knowledge of the sport with the sports that you're doing. You need to know the rules, the players, the teams, the histories and the statistics and the current trends. What is the most difficult thing for you being a sports broadcaster? Uh, difficult. If you bring up all that, those are really good points that you just bring up. And you do have to have a knowledge base of all those things. And I think a lot of us in this industry uh, whether we're talking on, on a three-hour show or on TV, you've got to know the audience. The audience is different, right? When I'm on TV mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock at night, like you're probably not watching your age group. Um, yeah. You know, my mom might be watching, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and <laughs> older people might be watching like at that time. And so maybe the more casual sports fan. So you have to know your audience. You can't like really get into X's and O's of a football game during that time. I mean, you can a little bit because I think people know football, but you got to be a mm -hmm. little bit uh, cognizant of your, your audience. I think here we deep dive into a lot of that stuff because we know people are really looking into it. And then we all have other, we all have strengths and weaknesses too. Like there are just sports sure. that we know better than others. Um, and I think the business has changed so much and that you ask the challenge, the hardest part on whatever, however you want to phrase it is keeping up with the business. I mean, the business has changed in the last five For years. Sure. What we're doing, we just started this brand new 24 seven network because we know you, when you listen, uh, when you go drive or when you will drive, you're not going to flip on the radio very often. You're watching on mm -hmm. in the podcasts, you're watching yep. on uh, your phone, right? You're watching the new thing. Yeah. YouTube. So like we are kind of looking at that down the road, but that's totally new. This is the first of its kind around here because viewer habits, listening habits have changed. Um, mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean radio is going away, but it's a different crowd listening to the radio than will be for the next five, 10 years and, and in the future. So uh, I think we have to keep up with that. And if you're a little older, that can pass you by really quick if you're not aware of it. Yep. Uh, and then one last thing I would say, everybody can get information now. Uh, so like we'll go talk to uh, Gator clubs or uh, Florida State fans. And I always say this or Georgia fans like, you know, the recruiting probably better than I know the recruiting because yep. you're a big fan of the school. So every time you get a Google alert or whatever else, you're looking at whatever your school's involved with. Well, we're trying to keep track of a bunch of different <laughs> schools, a bunch of different mm -hmm. sports. And so like, I, I think we have to be careful to say that we know it all um, and that we're the experts all the time. I think our job has changed from presenting, Hey, this is what's happening to analyzing what's happening. Uh, even mm -hmm. late at night, like if I'm doing a sports cast tonight, there's a really good chance if, or, or let's just take a Jags game. By the time I'm on at 1030 at night on a Sunday in Jag season, you know the result of the Jags game. I don't have to exactly. tell you that. So I don't need to show you four or five minutes worth of highlights because you saw, you already knew. But we might show different poignant parts of the game that we can analyze and say, what happened in this moment, give our thoughts and, and opinions, and then back that up with some reaction that we got in the locker room. So, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, we were showing five minutes of highlights because you might not have seen it. Uh, now mm -hmm. we don't have seen it. So I think that's uh, the knowledge of the consumer, the knowledge of the audience is so much stronger and, and more vast than it's ever been because you guys all have this too and, and can get yeah. the information as quick as we're <clears throat>
For sure. All right, you cover many sports. What is kind of your favorite sport to cover and why? Mm, good question. Um, listen, I'm a baseball guy at heart. Uh, that's my passion. Um, I do like golf. Like, so those are two things that I really like. Not that I don't like mm -hmm. football or anything, but I mean, I, <clears throat> everybody likes football, right? Um, yeah. But I like, uh, I've grown to love softball too. My daughter plays softball, so we're around the softball field a lot. Uh -huh. uh, I always say this, my favorite thing I've ever covered was horse racing, believe it or not. Oh, really? Uh, up in Albany, New York, we were covering horse racing, Saratoga. And it was a cool time to cover it. There was a local horse that won the Kentucky Derby. Uh, there was a lot of neat stuff about it. And in our industry that we show a video and we have natural sound. <laughs> like that was just around the time where HD was coming alive and the colors are popping. Because if you watch a horse race, you see all different colors. You hear all yeah. different sounds. So telling the story around horse racing was kind of neat. Plus, you could get up close and personal with the jockeys and the trainers. And, and you really felt like it was intimate. Uh, so I always say I like that. Now, I haven't covered it since 2008, really. Yeah. Um, uh, horse racing is a sneaky answer here of like one of my favorite things that like I've ever covered. But the passion is baseball. But think about it this way. If I sit here on my show today and talk about baseball for two hours, people would be sleeping. That's not exactly. a lot. Right. Yeah. We're talking about football. We can still talk from Shohei Otani to the baseball season coming up to different topics. We're not going to spend an hour talking about it. So uh -huh. that's a thing in our industry that just because we like something doesn't mean our audience is going to like it. And I think over the years, people make some mistakes on that. Like, hey, I'm, it, it's cool that if you have energy about something, people will also maybe feel that energy. But just because you like the NBA doesn't mean our audience is going to like listen to the NBA. Yeah. Uh, you got to pick your spots and, um, and, and sample that a little bit, but I do like golf. I do like, uh, I really do like baseball, like baseball's fun. Um, I wish we covered a little bit more of it here, but if I talk major league baseball around here, it, it's going to go on deaf ears most of the time, yeah. if you spend too much time on it. So what I'll answer the question this way, what I like the most now, 25 years into this thing is when people are engaged. And so when I feel like when we do a show, if I'm on social media and I can tell when people are engaged and most of that happens around Jaguars talk, around NFL yeah. talk, around football talk. And so when there's a big topic that pops and you feel people are going back and forth and they're agreeing with you or disagreeing with you or they're commenting, um, to me, that's engagement, that's excitement. And even if it's for an hour or two hours, I really like that. So that becomes my favorite topic for the day because- we, we get to all talk about it, have some fun. And, and it's like we're sitting around in your living room just talking sports. For sure. For sure. All right. Uh, you Just like you said earlier, you've been covering high school baseball in Jacksonville. What is kind of your opinion on the level of baseball we have here in Jacksonville? Well, it's unbelievable. I mean, I grew up in Rhode Island. Now, Rocco Baldelli was the guy, one of the first story I ever covered. And when he went top five in the draft, it was like, holy cow. I mean, it was an unbelievable yeah. story. And so once in like a, I don't know, generational type thing up there. Um, and, and other spots, even Albany, New York, where I was like, we would have an occasional big time player in, in mm -hmm. football or basketball or baseball, but this area is unbelievable in a lot of sports, by the way, from girls, soccer, yeah. football to, uh, baseball and softball. Uh, so I think we take it for granted around here. If you're from yeah. here, I think you take it for granted how good the baseball is. For uh, sure. I think it's unbelievable overall. I mean, I don't think. All you got to do is look at the numbers, right? I mean, we're seeing guys yeah. in the big leagues, see guys winning MVP awards and NLCSs and ALCSs from Daniel Murphy to Howie Kendrick. Uh, we're going to have draft picks this year, maybe Hunter Carnes, maybe Skylar Sanford. Like yep. I, every year, it seems like we've got that. We've got guys going to Florida. you got a whole team of guys going all over the SEC uh, yeah. or, or SEC. So it's unbelievable, really, if you think about it. And the other thing is this, and part of the reason it's so good is because I think the coaching is really good. We For have sure. guys that have played in the big leagues or played high-level ball, uh, played in the minors that are kind of pro giving back to the community and coaching guys like you. And, and you've got a coach that obviously has been around it too, right? So yeah. like, to me, that's a critical part of it. Um, yeah, we've got talent. Yeah, it's 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 warm down here. Yeah, we take it serious. Uh, yeah. A lot of ball fields and and Florida is one of the great states for any sport, especially baseball. But I think the coaching is is really a big part of it. I think there's a lot of people sure. with a lot of talent. And I think that's why we have so much parity in high school baseball. There's a lot of good coaching in, in yeah. high school baseball. 
Uh, but it's good, man. And and I tell my kids this, and I've told other kids this. The cool part about one of the cool things about playing ball is when you play in college or high school. I had a couple guys in Rhode Island even that we played against and played against in college that made it to the big leagues. And it's like, hey, I played against Sweet. that guy. That's a fun thing, right? Well, here, yeah. no guys that you play with currently on your team, um, or you play in travel ball, like those guys are gonna be there. Like there's going to be yeah. guys that every year you play against that make it. Uh, to big time college uh, programs or to make it to professional baseball and sooner or later we'll make it to the big leagues because the ball is so good. So I, I think it's pretty neat when you can play at that high level, like you, when you're playing on your team right now, you know, you could go to California and you could play against people. You could go to Texas yep. and play against people. you go to Ohio. I don't think every sport can say that. I don't think every state can say that every area can say that. I think you can say that in Jacksonville about baseball and that's, that's pretty cool. For sure. All right, starting at 2 p.m. on Wednesdays, you host a segment, a segment called No Gate Fees. You personally rank the top five public school and private schools in the area. Talk, kind of talk about that top five you have, you're going to put out later today. Yeah, we uh, we do this No Gate Fees. It's really born from the world that you guys live in, but you don't talk about it. Your parents talk about everything, yeah. like what's going on with travel ball and and what's going on with these exactly. sports. And it's changing for parents and how we grew up. And, and uh, so... Uh, that's really where the show was born. Uh, so we talk about a different topic each week. And then we have a committed to the uncommitted uh, scholarship program um, where kids aren't getting recruited as much as maybe they need to be. So we try to push their mm -hmm. names out there. That's been pretty cool. And then we'll have some coaches on. But you mentioned it, power polls. People like the power polls, as you're finding exactly. out. Too. Yep. You get a little feedback on those. Uh, everybody yep. thinks they're good enough. Uh, so this year... You actually stole my idea, too, and I didn't know you were doing this, but I was doing private school, public school because of you guys in St. John's Country Day. I mean, we knew you guys would be the top two teams in the area. Yeah. It's going to be hard to uh, unseat that. And so just to give a little more love to the public schools, I wanted to do both. So um, private school wise, it's uh, we moved you guys ahead uh, most recently mm -hmm. because St. John's Country Day lost. You guys don't play each other this year, too, which uh, we which don't know. Uh, but yeah. uh, which is too bad. I wish, wish you guys played each other uh, because you, we know you're obviously in different classifications. But we got you guys and St. John's Country Day and Bowles has been really good this year. Um, yep. I moved Bishop Kenny actually past Bowles this week because Bowles lost to, I think, West Broward. Bishop Kenny yeah. is in a really good story. I mean, they lost For a lot sure. of guys and they keep winning close games. They won, I think, again last night, three to two. So a lot of credit to them. We'll see them actually Tuesday. So I'll get a chance to see them in person. And uh, Bishop Snyder, I mean, Snyder's got some pitching that can compete, you know, with yep. with uh, with anybody. And we got that guy in the mound in high school baseball. You got a chance on the exactly. uh, public school side. Um, it, we, we mixed in like the Inglewoods and First Coast in our initial poll. I mean, Inglewoods played really good ball so far, has a good couple wins. Yeah, yeah. Uh, First Coast beat Creekside, which I think validated some of the stuff that they're doing, along with some of their other wins. Uh, and it's wide open, I think, in the public school realm uh, right now. And we're going to have on, on our show this week, we have uh, the Tokoy Creek head coach, Bill Weiser. Yep. And man, have they been good all of a sudden. I mean, they're only three years old and they are really pretty good. We saw them last year. I thought they were pretty good. And this year uh, they're playing excellent ball. I think they're on a 10 game win streak. So we've got those guys. Number one play who you guys saw Friday night. Pretty good. Now they're, they're well coached. Yeah, they are. They got some arms and uh, like that was a battle of that game the other night. For for sure. you guys. So they're in our top five and uh, Oakleaf has moved to the top five now too. And they've been weird. They got off to a slow start. I think they had some injuries, but now they yeah. just beat South country day. I think they've won five in a row now. And uh, there's a lot of different school. I think we just talked about this recently. I think high school baseball outside of you guys in St. John's country day, uh, because you guys, there's a different level of talent top to bottom there. I think it's wide open. I think it depends if you're playing a team on a Monday versus a Thursday or Friday and where their number yep. one is pitching in that pitching matchup. And then, of course, who throws the most strikes because that's how high school baseball works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You talked about the uh, the coach for Tukoy, Phil Weiser, just had him on the podcast a few a week ago. He's, that, that podcast is going to be uploaded Monday for the new series I'm doing. But it's crazy the things he's done. This is his third year there. New program, just crazy the things he's done for that team, and and it's turning out good. Yeah, he's been uh, – I don't know him very well either, and I even said this to him because I feel like we know a little bit uh, growing up. Uh, you know, my kids are getting older now, so a lot of these young guys, like, 
even you or freshmen that are coming up, you don't know as much about them. But uh, the thing about St. John's County is you're going to have a lot of talent. I mean, there's a lot of talent. There's a lot of people moving in. Uh, The baseball's good. So that's not going to be a problem. But I didn't know much about Coach Weiser. He had come up from Coral Gables, and obviously you Mm -hmm. learned more about him too. But he was at St. Joe's and and now comes up here. and He's done a really good job. And and I think they may even be surprising themselves a little bit how good the baseball right now and, and defending. Uh, but that's the bottom line. And, and again, another good coach that people really, I'm not sure, know a whole lot about. And Tokoy is a yep. program that people don't know a lot about. I think Beachside's going to be really good. They got a lot of that Bartram talent because uh, yep. that was the overflow going to Beachside. And, I mean, St. John's County, I don't know if we're going to see a loaded team in St. John's County because I think there's so much to spread out. Yep. Uh, but I think there's going to be a lot of competitive teams. In, For uh, sure. in St. John's County. I think we found that out in Clay County too, a little bit, right? Clay yep. over the years, Ridgeview. I think Oakleaf obviously has done its thing. Uh, Fleming is always right there. Uh, Fleming's been impressive this year. I didn't yeah, really yeah. know what they had coming in and, and they've got uh, some good stuff. So uh, yeah, there's uh, there's a lot to like about local baseball, especially at the public school, but Tokoy right now, I think is the surprise of the year. For sure, for sure. All right, as someone that has been covering sports for a long time, what kind of stands out to you in a player when you're watching them on the field? Uh, baseball specifically or? Baseball specifically. Yeah, that's a, it's a good question because we watch so much of it that I've said this before to people recruiting. I was like, how are you, like, what are you watching? Like, I'll ask those guys because to me, they don't look a lot different. Right. Like yeah. in basketball, you can tell if a guy's dominating the game. You For can sure. tell if a guy yeah. is more athletic. In football, if you're a quarterback or a running back, especially, or maybe a dominant defensive guy, or if you're an offensive tackle, that's huge. Like you can tell those guys can dominate a specific part. Well, outside a pitcher in baseball, I mean, what can you really tell that's a dominant? You might be at second base yeah. or shortstop and get two balls in the game. You might have a tough day at the plate, just didn't see it well, get a tough couple of calls by the ump or so in my opinion you can't really see one sample size of baseball and probably not all the sports but especially baseball you have got to see multiple games of a player to get a good Mm -hmm. feel of what that guy's all about because might just had a really good day might have had a bad day but I think over three games or something like that you can probably tell a little bit more and I think that's why you watch in between the actions like I think we can all tell now it's like okay that guy's a little twitchy right or uh, that yep. guy's got an arm or the, just the way people move and know the game. Like, that's a big thing for me is is the IQ part of it. And you can tell, I think, on a play, if you watch a specific player, how fast they're thinking and moving to get to the next player or the next thing that possibly could happen. And I think at the higher levels, you can see that or the scouts can see that. Um, and I really like the game. I like the game that way. So I think I noticed some of that. But I sure as heck wouldn't be a scout. Like I can break down a swing or say, mm-hmm. hey, that guy's got a nasty spin rate. Like I don't notice that much, but I, I do usually notice how fast somebody's thinking the game um, because I really enjoy the game that way. And uh, I think that's what they must be looking for too. I mean, once in a while you have a super athlete. You guys have a couple of those guys, right? I mean, just a super athletic guy in a baseball field. Yeah. That you can notice. Yeah. I mean, wow, right? And most of the time it's about guys that can run. Like yeah. watching guys run, is fun. Like Camden Fryer out at Columbia. Now he's playing football. He's at FSU playing football and baseball. Have you ever see that guy run? It's like fun to watch. There are not too many yep. people that are fun to watch run. Like yeah. it's fun to watch run. And and you wonder if a single to the center field is going to turn into a double. He's so fast type of thing. So I, on occasion, that stuff I think does jump out. But uh, I think most of it's a deep dive, man. It's not a one game sample. That's the biggest thing about um, baseball. Like if if you have a scout yeah. come in, if you have a college coach come in, you might be able to dismiss a guy after one game, but I don't know if you really know the player after yeah, one sure. game you're interested. For sure. Are right, we getting down to the end here? Let's talk a little bit more about the Jaguars. Got a few questions about the Jaguars. What does the future look like for the Jaguars with Trevor Lawrence? I think it's good. I, I think everybody believes that too. I'm a believer um, in Trevor. And I don't know if the whole generational stuff or if he's going to be Peyton Manning or Tom Brady, I, I guess that's probably off to a rough start if you think that. And I, I don't know if we yeah. should give up on that either. I, I think he's 24 yeah. years old. I think his floor is pretty good. 
Um, I think the biggest question is, can he stop fumbling the football and trying to do too much? Uh, because I think uh, him fumbling the football is a product of doing too much or trying to do too much. So other than that, I think he's, I think he's going to be the best quarterback in franchise history when it's all said and done. I think he's going to be here for another, whatever, uh, five to eight years at the very least. You never know these days in sports. And yeah. It's hard to predict the rest of his career. But I think we know that he's the guy. I think they know that he's the guy. And that being said, I think this is a big year for him to showcase that more and like slam that home and put an exclamation point on it. So they give him the big contract and, and now he's the guy. Can he take that step? And one thing about Trevor, he's an ultimate winner. And we haven't seen all of that yet. Uh, I think that got derailed in his rookie year. We saw it a little bit in his second year when he really started to climb. Yep. I think he was climbing again before he got hurt last year. And then the injury knocked that off. So um, I think that's one thing that you can't sleep on with Trevor. He's got physical skills. He can throw it, all this stuff. Smart guy, good leader, all those kind of things. Great. But he's a winner. And winners yep. usually win in sports. And I think uh, sure. he's... I think he's going to win. I think he's going to win big uh, in the NFL, and I think it's going to be here in Jacksonville. For sure. All right, what are kind of your thoughts on bringing Mac Jones to the team and back in his hometown in Jacksonville? Hey, I don't mind. I think it's good, uh, especially after talking to Doug Peterson at the owners' meetings this week. I think he had good perspective on it, too. Listen, it's clear in a way. Trevor's the guy. They've made that yeah. clear to Mac. I think this is good for Mac. Um, I think we give up on guys a lot, right? We're kind of like this cancel world anyway in a lot of different ways, but we really give up on athletes quick. And again, Mac Jones is not an old guy. He's a young guy who had a good experience in year one and really not a great experience in the next two years. So yep. for him, Justin Fields and players like that to sit back and and maybe they should have sat back earlier in their career, but they're going to sit and back learn. and get a little bit of a, a break. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on those guys. There's a lot of stuff yeah. to handle at 24, 25 years old. So I think he's, I think you could tell from his news conference, if you watch it, I think he was like really happy to be like, happy, oh, yeah. take a breath, get a little yeah. bit of this pressure and scrutiny off and, and just sit back and watch and learn and then reset his career. I think he's going to get another opportunity. Uh, the only concern I have with Mac from a football standpoint is his mobility. I think this day and age in the NFL, I think you got to be able to move a little bit. He doesn't move extremely well. <laughs> Um, so we'll see if he can, you know, figure that part out. You can figure it out, but the more you can move, the better you are usually in the NFL. Definitely. For sure. we got a couple more questions left here. What do you do in your free time outside of sports? Uh, golf. I used to, at least until this show moved to 10 to one, <laughs> yeah. I think I retired now. I didn't even know it. Um, a lot of, I listen every we make a free time to go to the games. Uh, the kids are playing ball. They're going to play ball at the college level. So we'll be doing that. We love that part of it. We love uh, the high school stuff and and watching the kids play. Nothing better uh, than watching uh, the kids play ball, the good, the bad. Uh, I think uh, your folks would say the same about you and, and your family. So um, that's I mean, outside of that, play a little golf. There's really not much else. man. We work and, and just hang out with the fam and um we're, we're taking a big trip to california in the uh in nice. june to go to all the baseball parks so uh that's going to be a lot of fun uh yeah. go to all the five parks in california so uh we like to travel a little bit but i'm not wouldn't say traveling is like on the top of the list we travel a lot with the job job as well so being home sometimes is just uh chilling out a little bit is a good thing we don't get a lot of chances to do that and I, i'm not a big chill out guy anyway i'm not going yeah. to the beach i don't want to go on a cruise I get bored in a hurry. So uh, <laughs> uh, find me a find me a ball game and and uh, or a ballpark and and I'll be pretty happy or a golf course. That's pretty good too. Sure. All right. What advice do you kind of give people wanting to get into sports broadcasting and be around sports one day? Well, there's, there's two things I probably would say the most. And one, you got to be passionate about it. Like a lot of people want to do this job. Right. But uh, does everybody like when I got into it, want to move to Alexandria, Louisiana and get paid like twelve thousand dollars for the year to do the job? Probably mm -hmm. not. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, so like there, that's a real part of the business. Uh, that's a changing part of the business. You can start. Some people can start in Jacksonville coming out of college the way the business has changed. Uh, but you're not going to make a ton of money and all those things, especially early on. There's a lot of jobs like that. So I do think this is a passion filled uh, job. And uh, let me turn this down for playing something here. Uh, this is a passion filled uh, job at the outset, especially like you got to like what you're doing. 
and enjoy what you're doing and instead of looking at the paycheck <laughs> coming yeah. in. Um, and the, the other thing is like, if you're getting into this business, it's all about reps, like at least what we do when I'm on TV, it's all about reps. You get more comfortable as you go uh, because yeah. you've been in every experience. You they've messed up or you've messed up or you can't hear, or you can't, all this stuff has gone wrong. And so you, you get comfortable with that. Um, the cool thing about it is you can now get reps earlier than I could have got reps because yeah. of all this, what you're Technology. doing, YouTube, yeah. you can do it yourself. So you can practice, you can watch yourself back. You can, everything is set up for you to kind of do what I do for a, on a daily basis on your own, much like you would go put a T in the garage and take some swings. So yeah, that part is really cool that if you really want to do it, you can get some reps. I mean, we got a guy down at Creekside, Noah Schlicksup, who calls the games, yeah. right? And that guy or that kid at 20 years old will Impressive. call more games than most people will call, even if they're in the business by 25 or 30. He's been doing it since he was like 12, 13 years old. So like yeah. you can actually do what he's doing if you're really passionate about it. So I think uh, – I think that part is good. And then the last thing is, I'm not telling you our stuff is dead, but um, I think the way of the world in the future uh, uh, for our industry is play by play. Uh, you, games are on TV. There's a bunch of places to put games. You can stream games. So play by play, sideline reporting, color, or behind the scenes in a truck pushing a lot of buttons, be involved in the broadcast. Uh, those are important jobs. Those are jobs that aren't going anywhere. And um, this job will get less and less glamorous as it goes. Those jobs will be more readily available, I think. So I tell kids, uh, if you want to get into that, make sure you look down that angle too. For sure. All right, Brent. Uh, thank you for coming on the podcast and good luck with the rest of your career. Thanks, man. You too. And uh, good luck the rest of the season. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Appreciate it.